What's up guys, my name is Ryan Patrick. I'm the host of New Joke City. We're here in the Big Apple trying to find the next up and coming comedian and what their process is from finding material on the streets and taking it to the stage. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram and make sure you keep an eye out for our YouTube page. Do you have like a 70s beat? Like, like a 70s porno beat? Yes. Give me that, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see you guys, yeah. He knows his 70s porn, doesn't he? That felt good. Yeah, that's that good. good. It only took 20 good. times. Welcome to New Joke City. I'm your host, and today we got New Jersey comedian Monty Mason. Monty, what is going on, bro? Oh man, Ryan, what's up, fam? How's everything been? Good, man. Good, good man. How you doing? Good, man. So pretty much what I want to know is, you know, you're a comedian. You've been in the scene for a while. What is the origin story of Monty Mason? Oh, you want to know my Avengers rip, my Iron Man type yeah. joint? <laughs> yeah. You want to see me come out with the suit? Well, I'm still in the desert trying to build my suit for rip. <laughs> you still working on it? Yeah, man. Yo, it's tough. So I started out as like one of the typical stories of Dare. Like my buddy was like, really? man, you think you're funny? I'm like, yeah, I'm funny. I go my mom, take my laugh, funny. My how, sister. How old were you when this happened? Wow. Well, I always was funny and people always tell me you should be a comic. Ah. Just do comedy. And I'm like, well, you know, comedy is, you know, I was always afraid. You're always afraid. So somebody dared me to go on stage in this place called Uncle Floyd's in Jersey. It was in Wayne. It's not, it's like a, it's like a, like a wings place now. Yeah, I don't yeah, even yeah. know if it's there anymore. Uh -huh. So he dared me and then I had five minutes. Five minutes. And this is what I thought comedy was. I had all mama jokes. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, man. Did I, you pick out somebody in the audience and say it to them? No, no, I would just come up there and just, I was like, mama jokes, mama jokes, mama jokes, mama jokes. And I was up there like, yeah, your mom's so fat. Like, and I was like, yo, your teeth are so yellow. Uh, every time you smile, like, people say, I got sunshine. <laughs> oh, God. Which I thought was funny. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else thought that shit was funny. So you were just, and that was your first time? My first time. First time. Um, it was good, it was good. I mean, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It was, I thought it was good. You don't know what comedy is. You have no. It's like getting laid for the first time. Yeah. You think you're stroking? You're not stroking. So, all right. So you bomb like the first time. What? What got you hooked? You know what I mean? Like, what got me hooked was like, I, I, you know, I was kind of. And it, here's what happened. Like, I dropped all that and I just started going with what I had, and then it was fun. Really? I, it was fun. Like, I was just like going off the top of my head, saying shit, and. And, and it was just funny, people were laughing. And I was like, that's, you learn something every time you step on. Yeah. So that's when I was like, yo, I'm gonna step on and I'm gonna, that's how I'm gonna write off just being myself, but also trying to just like be a little more honest. So mama jokes on their face, they're, 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 they're not hacky, they are hacky. But there's a time and a place for mama. There's a time and a place for you. And that's when you and your friends, uh, I'm talking to someone's mama, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not in front of a people who paid. They didn't pay a lot to see me anyway. So, second time I was on stage, I had like time to prepare. It was at the comedy club. It's not, it's gone. It's called Rascals in West Orange. Okay. So, I didn't know what it really was going to be. I invited a bunch of friends, you know, same kind of horse shit. And like, group packed. It's like 200 people in the room. Like, like, this is a legit, this isn't an open mic. This is a no, legit no, no. show. This is a show. This is a show. I come out and like this dude's coming on. This dude's are so funny. I get on and like I, I was so had so much stage fright. I couldn't move. Like my muscles were sore. I got on stage and I had all this energy just burst out. And then I had like all well, this bit that I've been working on and I did it. And then uh, I did that and then I got to laugh. I did nothing. I laughed. And then I just start boom boom. And then your instincts kick in. Like you're funny. And then like, I ran ran it. I didn't have a clothes. I didn't know what to do. Like the lights coming on. I'm like, man, I'm a star. Yeah. <laughs> lights going on. It's going. It's going. The dude's like, yo, man. Uh, you might wanna. The host is next to me like this, looking at me. He's <laughs> like, get off the stage. Get off the stage. I'm like, they love me. And then I, I didn't. Wow. He's like, you gotta get off stage, man. And I was like, um, oh, okay. And then I was just like, oh, it's like good night. <laughs> yeah. So it was. So your buddy dared you to go on stage like was yeah. there was there anybody else like even before your buddy decided to dare you to get on stage was there like did you have that drive to get up there like was there anybody that kind of like influenced you to try and do comedy or well, you, yeah. you see like a family member and you're like i gotta be like my uncle joe my mom know? was like my mom was like no jokes no oh, jokes you no think way. you're funny go to school 
And then I was like, always thought, so I always thought it was funny and I was too scared to get on stage. That's the barrier, too scared. There's plenty of guys who were probably hilarious, just too scared to do what they yeah. do. And what happened was like, uh, when I was younger, like my boys, I used to like, like to laugh and I had planned to do it in like 1990s, like 1990 something. Yeah. And like when I was a kid. And then like, uh, the dudes was like, they dared me to go on stage and I was just too scared, too scared to do it. And I wrote all this bit up and I, I listened to tons of Richard Pryor and everything was like so dirty. Like, so, but I thought that's what's coming. You that's what I want. have any feeling what you want to do. You see what everyone else does and you want to do that. And I was like, I'm going to go up there with Richard Pryor, man. I have jokes about one, one Superman eating out Wonder Woman. That's all oh my God. It's terrible. And she had one, it was different, you know. <laughs> that sounds, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, what was Richard Pryor like the main guy that you really look up so, to? Or no, 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 guy I just, Richard Pryor, um, Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock, Steve, Steve, uh, Steve, Steve Martin? Steve Martin. Oh, yeah. I love Steve Martin. Uh, and then the, some of the new guy, like, because I seen him and I was just like, yo, that guy is just so weird and different. Nothing like me, Bill Hicks. I love Bill Hicks. Because he was just so so like out there and he could say anything and it'd he, be like he's bombing but he was just so strong and I was like I want to do that I want to be there but it's hard to to, to bomb you, you don't I didn't bomb until like the the next thing the guy's like you gotta come to the open mic you gotta practice I'm yeah. like practice I'm just gonna do this show yeah yeah you saw what I did you right there you get a red hot audience every yeah, single yeah, time man, you get a red hot audience you can, you can go out there and play your nipples the whole time <laughs> nobody yeah, cares course. you gotta have some like this is like the talent but then the skill has to be sort of you know what I'm saying? You can give anybody a sword and then just cut the fingers off, cut your hand off. Exactly. You gotta know how to wield a sense of humor, especially nowadays. You say some shit that it can get canceled. Yeah. You know, and not even meaning to get canceled, but not knowing how to relay the words you're supposed to relay in a joke form. That's key now, because, you know, look at Chappelle. You know, oh, no, I got Chappelle. You know, Chappelle, I see, oh, man, I had seen like Chappelle, like, like, you know, it's just like, you see him now, like, he just keeps getting better. No. It's getting better. So I always tell guys like, yo, you're never gonna stop getting better as long as you do comedy. Yeah. And the guy you are now is not gonna be the guy you are in 10 years. It's true. Or 15 years. You never know what it's gonna take you either. Like some guy, like I just wanna do something that gets me to do comedy all the time. Yeah. That's all I want. But like, you know, I'd love to be like, like, uh, who's uh, Steve Hobbs stuff? Like, see, Steve Hobbs. Oh, yeah. That dude. Machine. He's a great joke writer, great, like, comedian, like, comedian's comedian dude. Like, yeah. Dope, dope guy, like you know, but like you know, he's big on he's on the ground, but he's not like the guy like always in movies. But he has a great career. He's got a solid foundation. Solid foundation, like he people know who he is, and like he can fill the room. What what else do you want? That's I mean that's the dream. You know, for the every dream community, you know is to, you know, but you got to get ready. Like it takes years and years. Like people think there's only a couple guys who just popped and were hot, like popped like, pop, like young and Murphy. Yeah, Chris Rock. Chris was Rock was like, he was super young. He said he, he had a story about him going into New York City and being just like the hottest comedian around. And then, <laughs> and then like, once everybody found out he was funny, he wasn't funny. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? As soon as people were like, yeah. And just try this, like, try like, oh, Ryan, Ryan, yo, you, yo, you're funny, funny. Do the show. And then watch your friends like, mm -hmm. What's up? Woo! Oh, come on, you in the back of a soul food place. There's three. I'm I'm the only black person here, it seems like it. You better. What the right? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, she got the soul. She got the soul. Y'all better have some soul. What's up? I mean, like every comedian, I feel like it takes a while to get your footing. How long did it take for you to like start to feel comfortable and like kinda learn to love the bomb? You know what I mean? <sighs> I don't look bomb. I mean, nobody does, but there's, um, a, there's a switch, I feel like. But there's like, like a that switch that goes like, you know what? If, if this plane's gonna crash. Yeah, you, you, got, you gotta learn. I'm gonna crash it and you're gonna <laughs> crash with me. Yeah. Don't think that you're not gonna take me. Like, because they'll, like, you know, your mouth is getting like, mm, and then you tell a joke, uh, it lays flat, and then like, uh, so it takes, it depends on how much stay time you want, but it takes like, I would say like, at least like five years depending on who you are whether you gotta have a certain I don't give a fuck yeah because I'm doing it to get somewhere and not this moment isn't what I'm always gonna be it's about it's a learning experience because your, your ego wants you to be perfect all the time nobody's perfect yeah and, and you're gonna wanna be the best you can be but you 
comedy is trial and error. You know, you write 100 jokes. 20, 20 of them are eight jokes. Yeah. And then the rest you could use, but like, you're like, ah, this is, yeah. every time I tell, boom, every time I tell, boom, floor laugh, floor laugh. How often, when you first started doing comedy, like, how often were you getting out and doing mics? Like, in the city, you know, I hear guys, they do, comedians will do like five, six, and nine. Yeah, yeah. You know? So then you're gonna grow when you do that, but not everyone has a chance or the opportunity to do that. Like, when I started, I would do the city. Yeah. Everything, everything, anything. I didn't, uh, Poetry mics. I did stuff like down low east side. Like I did clubs. I did uh like I did like so I used to do New York Comedy Club used to have this room on the side with a hot pipe with Angelo Lozada used to run it. What's the Angelo? And, and yo, you used to grab this hot pipe like ah it was like a <laughs> <laughs> and yo you used to it was, that was it. I used to do that. Three, four in the morning, like I'd go like last comic where like my face was hurt. I'm just tired. Like it's tired and and and, and you know, trying to just do the crap because that's what you hear. Hustle, hustle, hammer. Yeah. Hustle, hustle, hammer. That's how you're gonna be a comic. That's how and, and it is in a way, but you also need to make friendships and get the right people who are gonna be like, yo, give that to a shot. It's not like gonna, it's not all pop at once. It's yeah. like a little, I'm doing this now. Okay, I'm on this level. Or I might be like you, like I get a little host and gig. Boom. Now I'm here, oh, now I'm on TV, also get, now you get a big boost. And just now, slowly you build slowly, up. But uh, because if you get all that real early, you're just gonna flan out, and you're not gonna be ready for all that, like calling you up, like, you know, even Bird lost his agent, lost his uh, manager, lost went to LA, they're like, nope. Now who's got the last do you Do you think, I mean, for all the young comedians and like newer people that are just trying to start out, do you think that would be like the main piece of advice you'd give, or is there? Yeah, like I would just number one, write. Yeah, write every day. Write, write, write. I write a little different. I write, I write like on stage and off stage. Like I don't like to waste time. Like my process is painful. I gotta do so much time to wind down and get the bits the way yeah. I want them to be. That like, like, like if I'm trying to do an album, like I don't know, CK is just sufficient. I don't know how we could run out of album in a year. Like, I, it's insane. I, to me, like, you get, I'm an hour, though, an hour. That's, that's so much trial and error. So much, but, like, but you also have your, your instincts for what's funny for you get to way better. Yeah. Like, you're like, ah, that's, that's, that's funny, but it's not for me. It's it, not for Ryan. I'm not going to do it. And then you get better. People want to do these jokes, want to do this. Like, you know, like, you need a traction bit, too. Yeah. Like, there's in the beginning where you're running and everything stinks. Mm -hmm. Nothing's really, but then you get like one bit, it's like your traction bit, you can sort of build your act around, and then you say, okay, the oh, big titty bit works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for, and, and for your stuff, like, do you think, like how, how has your material progressed, like topic-wise? Like did you start doing just, I mean you started just Yo Mama jokes, right? Yeah, yeah, I started with Mama jokes. I mean jokes. like what do you, like what do you consider your material now? Uh, I don't know, like, kind of all over I place, take a lot more risks than used to, like I'm, I'm, I'm I'll do stuff that lose room because I know now I'm funny enough to get back. Yeah, yeah. But like, like you know, some of the stuff, like some of the stuff, I just you just do because you want to stretch your your ability to tell say horrible things because you, the comic is not really pushing the boundaries and being good. you got to be a little courageous. Yeah. With what you say, I mean, you could be clean too, but you still have to say stuff that people expect you to be a certain way. If even if you're clean. You still need to be like a, a good joke writer, a yeah. good performer, and all that doesn't come at once. Some guys, like off the bat, like I always say, you're a great stage person, you know, and you gotta work on your jokes. So, yeah, well, yeah, you know, really. Oh, okay. Now I've had club owners like, yo, man, you got a great stage person. But, like, and this is a business, man. Like, they want jokes for a minute, they want, like, a name recognition, they want all these things, like, you. It's different. Like New York City, there's so many. I walked in the show. I did a show at a hostel, dog. I was getting ready for an audition. I was like, yo, yo, you want to some time? I was like, yeah, man. Come to a hostel. Now, a hostel is basically like like a place where people from around the nation come and to spend like 40 bucks. This is before. Yeah, it's like the cheapest Airbnb ever. Yeah, it was before Airbnb. This was like, like these people are on the edge of Airbnb before. It was cool. I mean, they were just like, refugees basically and where do you do it just right in the lobby that is that do you think that was like your weirdest or like craziest show you think or no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> what was your oh craziest show uh, so I, I got hooked up with a booker who worked out like just out somewhere like Pennsylvania it's going well in the middle of the show guys like hold on buddy hold on 
got to stop shell walls. I was like, what are you doing? I'm running the show. He's like, we got to sell something. This dude sells a rifle in the middle of the show. What? So that's the show. Got a brand new Winchester rifle, only fired once. You can see that. It's rifle now. He's just cocking it, doing all that yeah, stuff. Some dude care. bought it. Somebody actually bought it? Somebody bought it. <laughs> what? I was like, I want my cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Cut. I'm selling guns and running Get like Nino better. Brown in the 90s. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I don't, it never stops. I tell guys, like, if you're doing shows at a certain level, like, people, you know, I did a show uh, with a comic, uh, like, up at a club in New York, and the show goes great. And I came out, and I was like, I laid too, it's almost like, you're, you know, you ever hear the thing about um, if you're uh, in a band, and you talk about certain kind of girls, those certain kind of girls come to the show. Come to yeah. Like, like, you know, Freddie Mercury must have got a lot of fat bottom girls before they were like, <laughs> yeah, really. I like fat bottom boys. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so, so what happened was like the, I'm like going, titties, 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 titties. I'm talking about titties. And it was just funny, the girls in front row, and then she was lighthearted, it was good. And then after the show, she's like, oh my God, put your face in them. No way. I'm like, whoa, 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 what? She's like, put your face in them. And then I'm like, yo, I, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to really. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna, that's, yeah. I, that's not something I do. It's just, I know, just jokes. I know. Yeah, yeah. Jokes, jokes. You understand? I'm not trying to catch a case. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. This is a sting operation. Not, not, you know what I'm saying? Like she was like, and she was like, grabbed my head. She's like, Phew! wow. Yep, they were fake. <laughs> oh my god. They weren't real. I was disappointed. That's wild. So I was like, yo, I'm in, and the, the crazy thing is my wife is like right there. No I'm like way. she co-signed it. She was like, yeah, go ahead. It's for comedy. I'm like, yeah. It's for comedy. I was like, yo, I, I, I thought I went far for a joke. <laughs> wow. No shit. But so, it's weird. With, I mean, like, <clears throat> with your wife, do you do you work material off of her? Or like, do you, like, how do you, do you write by yourself? Like, what's, right. your, what's your process? You no, said it's painful. It's painful. You know? It's just like, I'm just inefficient. I probably should. That's one of the things like, I really got to just. I feel like every comedian is inefficient. Like, I, I write tons of jokes and then like, you know, or I'll get like a, what I don't, I don't get, I get like the end of the joke. Like, that's why the titties fall. And I don't, I was like, just, oh man, and I have to work, you gotta work backwards. How do I get this? Or, yeah. uh, you know, uh, that's like, white people see black Jesus. I'm just like, that's not a joke, it's just a statement <laughs> just, or a premise. But how can you get how it there? I get there and I know it's funny. And then like, so, or I'll get like the whole joke. Like some stuff, I'll be on stage and I'll get like the whole bit. The problem is reproducing the bit the way I did on the stage. That's why guys who, who uh, tape themselves, tape yourself. I used to take, you know the tapes I got with me? Probably million. I had tapes of me bombing and then bringing them back. <laughs> really? Like that's a good one. I was like, and you hear one person laughing, and then I'm just, just hit them, hit them, hit them. It's just, that's so good. That's like them. good to, why, as, as painful as it is to watch videos of yourself, yeah. I feel like that is the one, one of the main things you can do to improve as a comedian. Yeah. Too, it's, it's getting better at anything is you're gonna get better at it. It's just you know, like if you can if you're funny and you can write enough jokes and you can get enough front cr enough different crowds, any kind of crowd, dead crowd, early crowd, late crowd, black crowd, white crowd, green crowd, Asian crowd, any kind of crowd, just people are people, you start to find there's a core of things that people always laugh at. Yeah. That you can always reach on. And then you can find the stuff that you have to push. But you gotta let you have to let them understand that this is funny. Yeah. You just don't know it yet. Watch me oh, do watch this. Watch me turn it funny. Yeah. And then and it's tough, man. Like sometimes it's, you know, you get in situations where it just is not a comedy. Like it's not yeah. It's not gonna comedy's not gonna happen. It's as hard as, <laughs> as badly as you want it to happen and there's no yeah. way it's gonna happen. People are like, you know, like the worst I used to get mad check spots in the city. So I don't know if people know check spot. Yeah, when, um, explain what a check yeah. So basically the check spot is when you're in a club, you think you're the dopest guy, they are like, alright kid, you're on stage. They give, you, they give you extra time too. You get 10 minutes, and all of a sudden here come the checks. And nobody wants to hear you because they just got overcharged with some chicken wings <laughs> in the cellar. And you're like, what? <laughs> and you're like, yo, are you telling your best jokes? You're spitting flat. <laughs> and it's just falling and flat. And it's just falling flat. Like the jokes don't even make it past the mic, but like uh, it's just falling because it's, you know, drinks are clinking. Like So painful. But that's that muscle. You've got to learn that, that I got to spit these jokes out. I got to learn how to tell the joke. And then eventually you're okay with that. That makes a tough skin. You need that. Yeah. This is a tough game, man. Like, uh, 
but it's a tough game. Like, pop right away, I'm not pop for 20 years, waiting for a lot to me, or just people don't like your style, and something happens when you just, the universe is just like, now it's sounding like, now it's sounding like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything falls what? But it, it's it's true though. I mean, they they say like you got it. There's so many skills that you don't know you need to build up, and it's only going to happen after you just strengthen every part of that muscle. Yeah. I would go traveling. You guys ever been to another country? It's a black man. I went to Ireland, man. Give it up. Give it up to other countries. I went to Ireland and I. It's one of the coolest accents of all time because it's the best accent for someone to curse at you. <laughs> there was a guy, I cut him off, and he's like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> did you not fucking see me there? What the hell is your problem? Did you not see me there? You fucking driving over there? And all I heard was... <laughs> <laughs> fucking look into my fucking eyes. I'll fucking take I'll push you back into your mother. <laughs> That's right, I'll reverse the birth. <laughs> what I heard was, <laughs> where's the rainbow, son? I ain't fucking stop you, that's where my rainbow is at. I know, you know, I've seen you perform plenty of times. Yeah. You know, you're awesome with crowd work, you're awesome with the written material. I mean, do you, do you see yourself just sticking to stand up? Do you think you'll like dive into writing a little bit? Like, what do you think is gonna happen in the future? I, I would, what, here's what I learned about my stupid ass. I thought I was a purist. Just do stand up as hard as I can, do everything I can, and that's gonna take me to where I wanna go, where I wanna be. What I realized is comedy is the thing you wanna do. It's not a meet on that sandwich all the time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta sort of, you wanna do comedy, you gotta maybe gotta act here, you maybe gotta do a game show here, you gotta, like, but stuff that's within your integrity. Like, I'm not gonna do no game show if, I want, if I'm out there talking about it's racism stuff. No, I knew it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's stupid. But like, you know, you, you cut an album, you, you go out there, you do everything you can to make sure you can do comedy, which is what I want to do. I just want to be in the want to do comedy. But I might not do some acting, do some short films, get a little bigger profile, and then people start taking it more seriously, especially online. You can maybe do get TikTok or Twitter. You gotta work, you gotta work the scene. Yeah. You know, get with the club owners, like, you know, bother them. It's a matter of just building, building your skills up in so many different ways. Like, what do you want in like five years? What do you want in five years? Like, I want to be like, touring, like, when I want, I want to be touring constantly. I want to be like, hey, I'm going out in tour for six months. Yeah. I'm going out, I'll come back, hey, I'm going to be a little spy, a little movie. I'm going to be a little TV there, you know. Maybe I'll write some short films with my fam, and my friends. So we can do like fun and stuff. Yeah. Once you become that big guy, like that guy, like that feet. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Like that? yeah. Ten years. That's true. You know, like, but that's what it is. That's what. That's the dream, man. Do comedy, do little stuff. You know, I, I don't even know fame is is the thing. It's more like little street fame, little comedy fame. It's like be blessed with be like that. Right here, once you move me to A-level, you know, like Whitney Houston. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It comes for you. I mean, that's not the goal, but... You know what I mean? Like, I, what I'm saying is like... I mean, I'm, you might be different. Like, I might be like... <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're like, fuck, you missed him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eight life. Ah, yeah, man. man. <laughs> I feel like that's a big thing of this is too, like, having... Having what you want, like being able to visualize what you want, having your goal and being able to work for it. Because there's so many people, I think, in this scene that they just like, I'm just gonna do comedy, and they just keep yeah. going and open mic. So, so you gotta keep progressing to different levels, different meetings, different arenas, different things, different levels, levels, levels. When you're around the same dudes, you're gonna be around the same dudes. Maybe you're not meeting the right dude who's gonna get you. Yo, why don't you do this show over here? Then it's the producer's issue. You gotta get out. Like, you show at a different club. I'm in New York City. Yeah. Just different things. That's the life. You stay, you get what you get. You stay in the same business, you get that. You gotta reach out and make some friendships and stuff. You gotta, you never know. know. It's fun, but it's, it's also business. It's a hustle. Yeah, the hustle. Yeah, what I learned is the, uh, you know, trying to be. Trying to be funny is not, it's not just about being funny, it's also about being funny. It's also about, you know, working on the business side and being if you want to be. You know what I mean? So, you dropped nothing but gems this entire time.
<laughs> you dropped knowledge the entire time. Oh, no, That's man. exactly what I need. Mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No! Getting old! <laughs> Alright, man. Well, dude, you dropped a ton of knowledge just now. You know, let me see you practice what you preach. Can you, you ready for a set? Yeah. Alright, come on. Let's do it. Let's go. New Joke City. We have a Yay! great treat for you today. Give it up for New Jersey based comedian Monty Mason. York is back. Yeah. I feel it. This was great. They had you guys locked up. But you're not locked up anymore. I'm not locked up anymore. I've never been locked up. I've never been seen a bike. This is great. You know what's really great about life? Is I don't have to use, well, I still like using the hand sanitizer. You like using the hand sanitizer because it was good, right? I used so much hand sanitizer, my hands were drunk. <laughs> What's the crazy thing about having a hand sanitizer is that they have different dispensing method, methods. One method, like, it comes out, it's nice and jelly. The other one was like someone just spit in your hand. But you're like, you don't want the COVID, so you deal with it. That's what life is, dealing with a lot of shit you shouldn't have to deal with anymore. Like right now, I'm dealing with this. <laughs> I wish, I wish life could be better. I wish everybody could wake up rich. Don't you wish you could wake up and be rich? Everything's better when you're rich. Go to a rich person's house, ring their doorbell. It's like, sounds like <laughs> it's a joy buzzer with no joy you know what my bell sounds like <laughs> never do the intercom and the buzzer <laughs> hello 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 <laughs> hello my cousins they grew up in brooklyn man you know brooklyn man brooklyn is no joke they live on flatbush and clarity that's where the bullets go by with Caribbean accents. <laughs> like Booyaka. <laughs> they have parties that never end. You know what I'm talking about? We have an infinity party. The party start that tree, end that tree. <laughs> they had a party one time, one, someone got shot at the party. It's crazy. It was like, oh my God, the guy shot, he like, Hold up, bring him back now, bring him back now, bring him back now, bring him back now, jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up, jump up. <laughs> That's what Caribbeans do, man. We have fun, man. My uncle gives like a crazy Caribbean directions. You know what? Caribbean directions sounds like 80s music. I'm like, yo, how do you get to Washington Square Park? He's like, Olan, Olan. Take Highway 1. <laughs> Down to the midnight sun. Make sure the wheels go round and round in my mind. Can you make a right down to Electric Avenue? <laughs> Thank you. I'm a former artist. It's real crazy. Life is so crazy right now, man. Music is real crazy. Do you remember when you have to listen to music backwards for an evil message? <laughs> now. All you have to do is press play. <laughs> You're like, whoop, 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 Lucy in the sky with the bleep, 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 bleep. Beware the 45th president. Ah! <laughs> now all you gotta do is press play. Pfft, what? Yeah, what? Put, put it in your mom's. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Chill, Scariana Grande. <laughs> She's out there doing coochie math. My son is 10, he can do the math. Today's music is so crazy, you play it backwards, you get a positive message. <laughs> like, whoop, 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 whoop. you gotta invest in shit. I say Bitcoin is it. <laughs> you better trust in hoes. <laughs> crazy, man. You can't listen to music backwards, right? 
can't listen to music backwards. It's real crazy, man. Have you seen a movie backwards? You can't listen to movies backwards. You listen to, you see Pretty Woman backwards. It's a movie about a nice housewife becoming a whore. <laughs> listen, guys, that's my time. Just a little bit of comedy. Give it up for my man, Ryan Lodge. One more time. One more time for Monty Mason, everybody. Killing it. So guys, make sure uh, you follow Monty on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you got. He's not on OnlyFans, so don't ask. This is New Joke City. Make sure you check out the socials. Guys, one more time, Monty Mason. We are New Joke City. Thank you so much.